Hey, what's up you guys? In this video, you're gonna learn about the arches of the foot with Senpai. For those of you who found it hard to understand or were too lazy to read the books, don't worry guys, I've done all the reading for you and put together this awesome video with a really cool ending. First, we're gonna have to learn a little bit of stone masonry before we discuss the anatomy. Yep, that's right, I said stone masonry. Arches like the ones we usually see in bridges, they have several factors supporting and stabilizing it. The first are the stones with their specific shapes fitting each other to form an arch. Then there are slips or staples. They are smaller structures holding the adjacent pieces of stone firmly together. Tie beams are longer structures that span across the arch. And lastly, suspensions. These give an upward force to maintain the shape of the arch. The summit is the highest point of the arch. The pillars are the points of an arch which are in contact with the ground. And the keystone is the stone in the arch where the forces from both pillars meet. Hence this stone handles the highest pressure in the arch. Okay, now we can apply the same theory to the arches of the foot. Except instead of stones, there are bones. There are three main arches of the foot. The medial longitudinal arch, the lateral longitudinal arch and the transverse arch which is described as anterior and posterior transverse arches separately in some books. The metatarsals, cuboid and the three cuneiforms forms are the bones involved in the transverse arch. The posterior transverse arch is the highest in the coronal plane. However, it is an incomplete arch because only one pillar touches the ground. The other pillar rests on the medial longitudinal arch. The peroneus longus acts as a tie beam and the dorsal interossei and the transverse head of abductor hallucis form the slips. The medial longitudinal arch is formed by the bones, calcaneus, navicular, three cuneiforms, and the first three metatarsals. Phalanges do not take part in forming the arches. The important joint of the medial longitudinal arch is the talocalcaneonavicular joint. The keystone is the body of talus, and the superior surface of that is the summit. The slips or staples are formed by the plantar calcaneonavicular or the spring ligament and the short and long plantar ligaments. The tie beams are flexor hallucis brevis, flexor hallucis longus, flexor digitorum longus, flexor digitorum brevis, and plantar aponeurosis. Suspension is done by the medial collateral ligament, tibialis anterior and tibialis posterior. Muscles are the main stabilizing factor for the medial longitudinal arch. The lateral longitudinal arch is made up of the bones, calcaneus, cuboid, and the fourth and fifth metatarsals. The keystone is the cuboid, and the summit is the superior surface of calcaneus. The slips are formed by the short and long plantar ligaments and the short muscles of the foot. The tie beams are the abductor digiti minimi, flexor digitorum longus, flexor digitorum brevis, and the plantar aponeurosis. Suspension is by fibularis brevis and fibularis longus. Ligaments are the main stabilizing factor for the lateral longitudinal arch. The lateral longitudinal arch is lower and represents a smaller portion of a larger circle when compared to the medial longitudinal arch. The posterior pillar for both arches is the medial tubercle of calcaneus. The lateral longitudinal arch is more rigid and less resilient than the medial longitudinal arch. The functions of the arches. The arches distribute body weight to weight-bearing areas of the sole. The arches make the sole concave, protecting the soft tissues of the sole against pressure. They act as springs and shock absorbers when jumping. This is seen mainly in the medial longitudinal arch. And now let's discuss some clinicals related to this topic. Pest planus is the absence or collapse of the foot leading to a flat foot which may be congenital or acquired. This leads to a clumsy shuffling gait. People with flat foot are more liable to osteoarthritis and trauma. Pes cavus is an exaggeration of the longitudinal arch of the foot. Atrophying of the lumbricals and the interossei cause claw foot. Spina bifida and polymyelitis are causes for pes cavus. I will leave a link in the description for a quiz regarding the arches of the foot. And thanks for watching. 
make sure to subscribe